Okay, YouTube, uh, Dirk the Eng here again. Um, today I started to characterize the accuracy of the mill and see if I could uh, make some improvements. So, um, um, I thought I would explain how I was doing this. Um, the first thing I did was take the mill and measure and and make two pads that are in the same plane on the right and left hand side and uh, that way I have a flat reference and I used a one inch uh, router bit with a forty percent step over so that there would be plenty if of peaks available to sit on if there were peaks and valleys in the in in the system due to misalignment of the head okay so then what I did is I took um, my machinist rectangles uh, these are more geared towards woodworking but according to the specs they're about as good as any machinist rectangle um, that you would buy from McMaster or any of those other kind of uh, machinist uh, uh, clearing houses so um, and I just took some hot glue um, and I set I set the the triangle on flat surface and then kind of beaded on either side of the uh, triangle so it is a complete flat reference uh, made sure it was clean so then this surface on the rectangle represents as close to a vertical as I can uh, possibly create uh, here with you know reasonable um, cost and efficiency so uh, then I took my dial indicator and attached it to the z-axis and indicated off of that surface in um, traveling up and down now of course this is the XZ plane so it's measuring the accuracy of the z-axis in this direction and later I will measure the XY plane which um, goes in this direction so the reason I created two pads was so that I could measure the XZ on this side and the XZ on that side just in case there's twist in the gantry um, I can try and help hopefully correct for that a little bit so uh, I created a I just stepped the the, the z-axis down every uh, point 0.1 inches and measured the um, the what the indicator was reading and that's what you will see on the screen here if I can get that to focus okay so um, the column on the left, far left, is the Z position, then, then the dial indicator. And then uh, you see that plotted here. Um, and you can see that there that it is not a flat line, which um, indicates that there is some uh, uh, inaccuracy in the alignment. Um, it's not real bad. It's only 0 0.76... Um, 0.76 uh, thousandths per inch of Z travel, but that will contribute to the inaccuracy in the X axis direction. So, um, uh, the other thing to note is that if you take the line and then uh, plot it in this column and then subtract the indicator to, from that to, the, to this, you get the random error associated with the linearity. So then if you do 1.96 times the standard deviation, you can get a 95% confidence interval um, that says basically it will move the z-axis in a straight line within that amount, so uh, 0 0.82 thousandths of an inch, um, with a 95% confidence. So 95% of the time it will be inside of that um, uh, value. So uh, to correct the linearity, what I can do is take a shim, and let me think here. This, when it goes, z-axis goes down, the dial indicator is going up. So that means that it's tilted this way, and I can shim down in this corner uh, according to that to that linear expression and that should take out the uh, the linear portion of that uh, error the random error will never go away that is probably due to um, you know 
inaccuracies in the bearing, dust, whatever's on there, the inaccuracy of this surface. Um, but, you know, having a 95% confidence interval at 0.86 uh, or 0.82 thousandths of an inch is uh, really quite astounding considering the cost of this uh, system. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of it and um, also I will indicate this way to get the YZ direction and I will post the results on my build log. So uh, appreciate it and um, look forward to seeing you guys later. Don't forget to uh, like, rate, and subscribe.